Thank you so much, Heidi. Welcome, everyone. Good to see you all again and meet some new friends. Okay, so for the next few hours, we're going to be talking about the FDA's bioresearch monitoring program. The FDA goes out and, as part of the BIMO program, does inspections of sponsors, CROs, monitors, investigators, clinical uh, investigators that are doing investigator-initiated studies, those sponsor investigators, as well as IRBs. We're focusing on one of those particular elements, how the FDA goes and does those inspections of sponsors, CROs, and monitors. And they use a document called the FDA's Compliance Program Guidance Manual. So we're going to talk specifically about 7348.810. All right, so we, we certainly have that as a handout here. At this, this document. And really, this is how the FDA conducts those inspections. It's the, the SOP for how they conduct those inspections. So it's very helpful to understand what they're looking for and make sure that our quality subsystems align with that. So we're going to talk about regulatory requirements and how they're being incorporated into inspections. The FDA itself gets inspected by the Office of Inspector General. So oftentimes we'll read in guidance documents or information that's provided from the FDA that you'll see where they are responding to an OIG inspection. And FDA has been cited before for, rather than changing the regulations, trying to teach us through guidance documents and warning letters. We have those regulations. They, they were codified in 1980-81. They change sometimes. But oftentimes what the FDA is going to be focused on is found in those warning letters. So we'll talk about new regulatory requirements. We'll talk about the DPGM, the rules that support changes in inspection focus. So why are we seeing this updated compliance program guidance manual? And it was because of the final rule for registering our trials on clinicaltrials.gov. We'll look at the FDA's application of the inspection manual contents as reflected in regulatory communication. So we see how the FDA is taking this document and what, how they are applying it. And as I mentioned, that's reflected in the warning letters and information that we receive. We'll look at steps for preparation for an inspection. The FDA is going to inspect what they expect. So we want to make sure that we're very clear in terms of what those expectations are so that we are prepared. So as I mentioned, this compliance program guidance manual was updated in April of 2017. This is to reflect updates and changes to the, top, the final rule for registration of studies on clinicaltrials.gov, incorporating information about the primary and study end dates, which we'll talk about. So when I mentioned making sure that our quality subsystems align with the FDA's guidance here, or their, their processes, when we think about sponsors, when we think about any entity, we think about the core responsibilities of that entity. For sponsors, it's making sure that they keep their application current, making sure that that study is conducted appropriately, selecting qualified investigators and monitors, and making sure that there is oversight. But really what it comes back to is making sure that they can support the integrity of safety and efficacy data that gets reported to the agency. And in doing that, they have to ensure that they meet those goals of good clinical practice, making sure that, that good data is obtained from individuals whose rights, safety, and welfare are protected. So we saw in ICH E6R2 that was updated in 2016 that Section 5.0 was incorporated, was, well, actually was changed, to reflect quality management at the sponsor level. So when we think about sponsors, what is it that you are required to do per regulations? How are you structured to do it? The FDA is going to look at organization and personnel. Here are your regulatory obligations. How are you structured to do that? Who are the individuals that you have selected? How are they trained? What are the minimum qualifications for them? Do they meet those qualifications? If you are outsourcing, how do you select and manage your vendors? And we'll talk in, about that in more detail as well, well, all of these. Monitoring procedures and activities. How does data move? How does that data move to your vendors, including your investigators, your IRBs, your CROs? How does it move from them? How is information shared? How is it used to support protection of that data? 